Hello, my name is Luke, and today I want to show you Valley of the Kings Afterlife. Now, Valley of the Kings Afterlife is the second in a series, uh, the first being Valley of the Kings, the second Valley of the Kings Afterlife, and the third, uh, which I do not own, but I presume it's also a fantastic game, uh, Valley of the Kings Last Rites. Uh, any of those are only about 20 bucks. Uh, they're not expensive but they're great little games. Uh, you can play from one to four players with these, and if you decide to, you could take multiple of these that I just listed in the series and mix them together and sort of create your own new game um, with a combination of some cards from one game, some cards from another game. Um, a lot of fun. Uh, this little deck builder is... Uh, with the theme of we're decorating a pharaoh's tomb or filling a pharaoh's tomb. Um, and the concept is he who dies with the most toys wins. Uh, the person that has the most points in their tomb by the end of the game wins. That's how you would play it if you were playing with two, three, or four players. But today I'm going to be playing this as a solo game. And uh, the solo rules... Are just a tad different. Um, with the solo rules, you have to make sure that every single card ends up in the tomb, um, or at least one of each type of the card. Um, purple cards like this one are unique, so there's only one of those, but all these other color uh, cards that are throughout the deck um, are two of each in the deck, and so um, we'll be using the abilities and the, the values of these cards to um, build up our deck and then slowly but surely take those cards and entomb them, which take them out of our, um, our pool of cards to use, um, but it places them in the tomb, which are basically the victory points at the end of the game. So when you... Um, I'll just grab a handful of these. One, two, three, four, five. You'll normally have five of these at the beginning of a turn. And you can do three actions with these cards. Um, if you look in the upper left-hand corner, there's these little uh, scarab with a number in it. Uh, that is the monetary value. So this hand, if I used all the cards for money, it'd be worth five money. Um, or you can use the cards for whatever their special ability is. You can do that. You can use three of them for money and two of them for their abilities, or uh, four for money and one ability, or all of them for money, any combination that you want of those. Um, and then once per turn, you're allowed to take one of these cards and move it into your tomb. And like I mentioned earlier, uh, when you take it out of your hand and put it in your tomb, you no longer can use those cards. Uh, however, those cards are the only cards um, that represent points at the end of the game. Any duplicates you have in your tomb um, do not give extra points. And so we want to get as many unique um, and individual cards as we can into our tomb by the end of the game. Um, We'll need all the purples, and then out of all the other colors, we'll need one of each card in the deck. I mean, in the tomb. If we end up with duplicates in there, they just won't count any extra points. And if at the end of the game, when um, this draw pile has run out, and the, uh, the pyramid has run out, and our cards um, have been spent... If on that last turn, if we've gotten all the cards in the tomb, uh, we will win. Any other solution, uh, any other situation that happens at the end of the game will signify a loss for us. And so um, that's, a, that's the only difference between the solo version and the multiplayer version. Multiplayer version, you're just trying to get a better score than other people. Uh, solo version, you're trying to get one of each of the cards into your tomb. Hopefully that makes sense. Let's go ahead and start. 
Okay, like I mentioned before, we'll normally start out with one, two, three, four, five cards in our hand. Um, but there are a few more um, things that I wanted to mention before we get started. I already said that this is the tomb. This is where all the points cards will go, or all the cards that you turn into points will go. Uh, this is considered the pyramid. Every once in a while, um, a card will reference, take a card from the pyramid or something like that. It's talking about this area right here. Uh, this draw pile is called the, the stock. And uh, as we use cards from the pyramid, as they discard those or buy those um, cards from the pyramid, uh, things will crumble. They'll come down from the top. And so uh, if this card disappears um, or is bought, this card will fall down, that card will fall down, and then a new card will appear here from the top of the stock. Um, if you notice this little number two, Roman numero two, on the bottom right-hand corner of all of these cards, um, the, the number one cards, the first tier cards, are the starter cards. That's what we're going to start with right there. Uh, number two, the second tier cards, are like the first upgrade. Um, and then about halfway through this deck, uh, that number will change to a three. And the bottom half of this deck are like the more powerful upgraded cards um, so that you don't start out the game with some super powerful card. Um, we save those till towards the end. Uh, this is a discard pile. It starts with just one card in it. Um, but it's called the Boneyard, and so if one of the cards in the pyramid says something about take the top card from the Boneyard or something to that effect, uh, it is talking about this discard pile right here. All right, I think that covers it. Let's get ready for turn one. All right, I've drawn my five cards, and um, I've got two of these shop tea figurines, uh, two of these box of food and one urn. Um, they each could be used for their special ability. Shop tea lets you swap two cards in the pyramid. Uh, the box of food lets you uh, sacrifice a card in your hand. That would put it in the boneyard, entomb a card with a lower cost, um, or the urn, put the top card of your discard pile on top of your deck. Um, I could use any of those actions, but instead of the actions, I'm just going to use them for money at this point. Um, I'd really like to get this, this chapel because it says each player may entomb the top card of their discard pile. And uh, when I start building up my discard pile, I will want to get things in the tomb as fast as I can, since normally you only get to put one card in per turn. And so I'm going to start off um, by buying one of these two things because you can only buy from this bottom row of the pyramid. And so I'll buy one of these and then the offering chapel will fall down and on the next round I can buy that because I really like that card. All right, so I'm going to spend these four um, to buy let's say, this Synet game. Um, and purchasing those will uh, send this to my personal discard pile. Uh, it's not the same as the Boneyard. Boneyard is like, it's gone. It's not mine anymore. This one, um, this discard pile, once I run out of my draw pile, then I'll shuffle up my discard pile into a new draw pile. All right, so I've spent four to buy that. I have one more card, um, and I don't think it's going to be one that I'm really going to want to use anytime soon, so I'm just going to go ahead and entomb it. Remember, you can entomb one card for free out of your hand every turn. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Um, at this point, uh, these are all the used-up cards, and so I could put them in any order, um, on top of my discard pile, and uh, then I draw five to come back to my one, two, three, four, five to be ready for my next turn. 
Um, but before that next turn starts, we have to crumble this pyramid. And so this offering chapel is going to come down. The axe is going to come down. And a new card is going to come up from the top. And now I'm ready for the next turn. I already mentioned that I really would like to get this chapel because uh, its special ability is each player may entomb the top card of their discard pile. So again, I have to spend four of these things um, in order to get it. And I'm going to choose these four. Uh, this last one that I didn't have before is the offering table. Uh, that is something you use uh, to defend against an attack from the other player uh, during a two to four player game. And so it's sort of um, not really used for anything but money during a, um, during a sol solo game. So um, one, two, three, four monies are going to get this offering chapel. That'll go right there. And then the urn, it's special power. So I've used up those. The urn special power is put the top card of your discard pile, uh, or that's, that's this one, <laughs> top card of your discard pile on top of your deck. And so that's your draw deck. Um, those are all now, those are all used, and so they'll go on the discard pile. And again, I'll draw back up. This time I draw my one card. And I need four more, but I've run out of the draw pile. And so I'm going to shuffle up the discard pile, just like any other deck builder. And I'll use the remaining one, two, three, four cards to pull back up to a, a hand of five cards. And again, before I start the turn, these are all going to crumble, bringing out a new one. I've got the three things that I can get are an axe. If you discard an axe as the result of an action, each opponent discards the highest card from their hand. Linen bandages, which are into a card. Each opponent with at least one card in their draw deck may draw a card. Or the goddess Nut. Select an opponent. That opponent may take the card with the lowest cost, and you take the card with the highest cost. And so several of these um, in a solo game aren't going to be worth very much for their actions, um, but they are still worth two monies as opposed to the, uh, the starting ones that only are worth one money. Um, and they're still worth points because um, I want one copy of each thing to be up here. And so on my turn, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six monies um, that I can use. I'm going to spend four to purchase this goddess nut, and that'll put it into my discard pile. I'll move this pile over a little bit, put it in my discard pile. And now I'll use this offering chapel. I'll use it for its special ability. Each player may entomb the top card of their discard pile. And that sends it over there. Normally, and in the rule book, um, the tomb is just one long stack. Um, but since it says it's just public information and everyone can know what is in each other's tombs, um, I will separate mine out by color a lot of time to make it easier for me to tell how many of a certain thing I have. Um, but again, I've used all these cards, so I can put them all together, put them into the discard pile in any order that I want. Um, I'm going to put that offering chapel on top just in case something would make that valuable. And then the pyramid crumbles. A new one is replaced, and we're ready for the next turn. One, two, three, four, five. So I've got my five cards. And there is a new card on the, this bottom row here. 
It is the brain hook. Uh, it's going to be the only, probably the only card in this whole game that I'm going to read the flavor text at the bottom, but it just makes me happy. Uh, it says, Egyptians believed that brains were worthless. They used a hook to remove them through the nostrils. It's pretty gross, um, but I think it's a sort of funny comment, and so made me chuckle, so I'm letting you know about it too. All right, first of all, I'm using this urn for its special power. I'll use this all the time, probably. Put the top card of your discard pile on top of your deck. It'll get that chapel back in my hand as soon as I can. Now I've got four monies left, and I will purchase... I'll purchase the brain hook, um, not because I really need it at the moment. The brain hook special power is reveal the top card of the stock. This one. You may buy it for two less than its cost. If you don't buy it, then sacrifice it. So we take a card from here, and if we decided we wanted it, we can pay two less to buy it, and if we don't want it, it'll go into the boneyard. So it's not a card that I need need right at the moment, but if I buy that, it only has a cost of three, and so I can uh, have one card left over to put something in the in the tomb. So I will spend these three cards to buy the brain hook. It goes into the discard pile and I will entomb this Shabti figurine thing. The pyramid will crumble and the top will be replaced. And I'll put these on top and draw five more. One, two. Oops. Shuffle the deck. Three, four, five. All right. So now I've got a couple higher value ones, two, four, five, six, seven. So I've got a lot of money in my hand. Um, or I can um, use any of these special actions. And so I'm going to see what I can do. Uh, first of all, I think I'm just going to take this purple card and it talks about an opponent. And so I'm not really going to use its action. I'm just going to go ahead and put it immediately in the tomb. So I've already entombed my one card that I'm allowed this turn. Uh, everything else is now going to be spendies. They're all going to be money. And so I've got five I can spend. Uh, this one looks sort of fun. This is a burial ceremony. Entomb any number of starter cards. Um, it's going to be only useful at the beginning. And so um, I try to get it as soon as I can, and then I'll put it in the tomb. So one, two, three, four, five. Um, and that is its cost. So I will purchase it. It goes into my discard pile. The pyramid crumbles. Another one comes out. These go back on top. I draw five. One, two, three, four, five ready for the next turn. All right, I've got that brain hook. Serdab, Serdab, I don't know if that's how to pronounce it, and I apologize if uh, there are any Egyptians listening, because I have no idea how to pronounce anything. So, sorry. Okay, so this is the new one that's come out. Set aside any number of cards from your hand. When you draw a new hand, add these set-aside cards to your hand. So that's pretty helpful. Um, let's see if there's any other ones. I'm going to go ahead and buy this expensive one. Um, I've got one, two, three, four, five, so I'll spend all five of those for this axe to be placed on top of my discard pile. I've run out of 
All, I've used all my cards, so I had nothing that I could entomb on that turn. Pyramid will crumble. A new one is replaced. My used cards go on top. I'm going to begin to draw one. Two, three, four, five. All right. Um, that card that I just bought on my previous turn, this axe, um, I think I'm going to do like I did with this purple card, and I'm just going to uh, go ahead and entomb it. So that card has been entombed. So now all I have is... Um, I can either spend these or I can use them for their actions. Let's see what's out here. I'd really like to entomb something else. Oh, I've already entombed one, so I can't. So I might as well spend everything then. That's got potential. The dagger here says if there are at least as many cards in the boneyard as there are players... Each player, starting with you, takes the top card of the Boneyard. That will be really handy to start getting some of these cards out. So I'll spend all four of mine to get this dagger. Um, even though I need some in here, I also... That's going to be a helpful card to have in actual play. And so uh, I'm not going to entomb that one until I find the second one from this deck. And then I'll entomb one and keep using the other one. All right, I've spent those. The pyramid will fall down. We'll draw my five. One, two, three, four, five. Ready for the next turn. All right, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven spindies uh, that I could use. Um, but I'm going to look at this one first. This is the Burial Ceremony, and its special power is Entomb Any Number of Starter Cards. And that sounds super helpful, but it turns out that I got something wrong in my explanation earlier. For the two, three, or four player game, if you have duplicate cards in your tomb, uh, it's just worthless. It doesn't help you or hurt you at all. But in the solo version of the game, if you uh, have duplicate cards in your tomb, they count against you. And so uh, you want one of each and no more than that. And so I actively don't want to just entomb random starter cards because I've already got a box of food in there and I've already got a shab tea in there. So I'm going to use this as my uh, my entomb, my free entomb for this turn. So I'm going to put that there. Move that a little bit. Now I've got five to spend. How about... I'll spend these two. That's three monies to buy Harvest, it goes into the discard pile. And I'll use the Urn for its special power, and its special power is put the top card of your discard pile on top of your deck. I'll put that there. And then Shabti's power is I can swap two cards in the pyramid, or I can sacrifice a card in the pyramid. Um, I've, I've just bought a Harvest, so I don't need another one. Um, and so I'm going to sacrifice it. And what that means is it'll take it from here, put it directly into the boneyard. So now we will crumble, crumble the deck, crumble the pyramid, I mean, and put these on the discard pile, start drawing one, two, three, shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Shuffle, shuffle. Now we're back up to five and ready to start the next turn. All right, so we've got a brain hook 
We've got a dagger. We've got the harvest. Uh, the harvest talks about uh, opponents. Each opponent with an empty discard pile s sacrifices a card or discards two cards. I don't have opponents, so this is pretty worthless. So I'm going to go ahead and use it as my free entomb for this turn. So I'm already doing pretty good. I've got three blues already entombed. And if you look at the bottom, it says tomb art. And there's a little parentheses seven. You probably can't see it because of the glare. Um, but tomb art seven means there's seven different blue cards in this deck. And so uh, my goal is to get all seven of those in there. So I've used my entomb. So now I've got five that I can spend. I'm going to go out on a limb and use my brain hook. Reveal the top two cards of this. No, reveal the top card of the stock. You may buy it for two less than its cost. Otherwise, sacrifice it. Sure, I'll I'll buy that for two less than its cost. Its original cost is three, and so I'll spend that one card to buy it. This urn will let me. Put the top card of the discard pile on top of your deck. Like, and there's nothing I can buy for two. And so this is just going to be used up. Um, I mean, it's just going to be worthless. Um, and it'll be put right here. But the thing is, I didn't do anything with the with the pyramid and if you don't interact with the pyramid by either buying something or moving positions or something uh, if you don't interact with the pyramid you need to sacrifice something so i will probably sacrifice something that i've already got up here which is this goddess nut and so i've already got one up here so i will sacrifice that card by putting it in the boneyard It'll restock from the stock. Draw one, two, three, four, five. Cool. Offering chapel. Each player may entomb the top card of their discard pile. I'm going to use that to let me discard. I mean, to let me. Uh, Entomb this dagger. And then for my... So that was not my free entomb. That was entombing using the card. And so for my free in, entombing, I will, uh, I will entomb this offering table because um, it also references an opponent. And I don't have any opponent, so it's worthless to me. So now three points. I'm just going to use this special power. Set aside any number of cards from your hand. When you draw a new hand, add these set aside cards from your add these set aside cards to your hand. So that'll let me keep these cards. Um, I'll add these to my five that I draw at the beginning of my next turn. I didn't interact with this at all, so I have to trash something. And I will trash this Serdab because I've already got one right there. So I've trashed that. These will go on top of the discard pile. The pyramid will crumble and get restocked. I will draw five. One, two, three, four, five. So now on my next turn, I get to start with seven cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And all of them are starter cards except one. Um, so I can probably buy something expensive maybe. This one's worth five out of my seven. That's pretty good. Uh, 
Okay, so I'll spin these five, one, two, three, four, five, to buy this mirror case. And then I will use the offering chapel. Each player may entomb the top card of their discard pile to just immediately put this mirror case into the tomb. So that was not any, um, that was not my free entomb for the turn. And so my free entomb, I'll use this urn. And I believe that means I've got all of the starter cards already in this tomb. And so I'm just going to move those up and sort of put them sideways to show me that I don't need to, uh, to put any more of those starter cards in there. All of these can go into the discard pile. The pyramid crumbles. Gets restocked. One, two, three. Four, five. All right, offering chapel, urn, serdab, box of food, and the brain hook. I'd really like to get the dagger back. That'll be helpful. That costs four. The sling is also helpful because I don't have one in my little stack here. What to do? What to do? So I'm going to spend these three. One, two, three. Uh, in order to purchase this sling. I'll use my Offering Chapel's special ability. Each tomb, each player may entomb the top card of their discard pile. Just immediately get the sling in there. And for my free entomb, I'll put this brain hook in there. I'm starting to run out of space for this discard pile, so I'm just going to move it down here. And we'll see how that works for us. These get discarded. The pyramid crumbles. A new card comes out. Draw five. One, two, three, four. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. There's only three cards in my discard pile. Um, something that's sort of interesting about this game, um, instead of feeling like the regular game, um, when you play the solo game, uh, it feels like it's a, a custom puzzle that's a little bit different every time. You have to use all the cards in just the right way to make it so you end up with just the right thing in the tomb. All right. One, two, three, four, five. I've got five cards, one of which is this Serdab. I'm going to spend these four random monies to get this dagger into my discard pile. I'll put the serdab into my tomb. And that's all I can do on that turn. But since I've interacted with the pyramid, that'll fall, that'll fall. This will come out. One, two, three. So I'll need two more cards out of here. One, two. Okay, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six monies that I could use. I've already got all of my starter cards already entombed. I don't want any more in there. Uh, later in the game, there are some cards that will let me just sacrifice cards in my hand. And so that'll be a great way to get rid of some of these starter cards. Um, in the meantime, though, I will go ahead and spend these four cards. Four monies, one, two, three, four, to buy this bracelet. And its special power is discard three cards 
and then take a card from the base of the pyramid. So that's any of these three cards that are at the bottom. So that's pretty helpful. So I'll use this urn to put the top card of your discard pile on top of the deck. And then I've got nothing to do with this, uh, this other urn, and so I'll just set it down here, let everything fall down, and restock. So I've only gone through about a third of the deck, um, and so a lot of the game is like what I've done, but all the cards are new and different as you go down through, especially when you get down to the second half when you're on that tier three. Uh, for example, the Kopesh, discard a set card and take a card. So you just discard something and grab a card out of the, the pyramid. Uh, take a set card that is not of the same set as any card in your tomb and entomb it. Just a free entomb right there. Um, victory lets you entomb a card in play. So a card that you've just played, you've used it up for the turn, you can just entomb it. Um, these entomb a card from the pyramid. Sacrifice a set card in your tomb. And so you're going to take a card from here and put it directly in here and then take a card from here and put it in the bone yard. And so it is, uh, there's all kinds of fun little abilities that you do throughout this game. Um, I'm just gonna end this game for now. Hopefully it's been a clear enough explanation, um, but I highly recommend this game. Um, if someone is familiar enough with deck builders that say Dominion makes sense, uh, then this is an easy stretch from Dominion to this, um, but the fact that you can use something as money or the action and its victory card, um, it sort of takes Dominion and cranks it up to 11. Um, I just really like this game, and it fits in a little box. Um, it's, it's great. Again, they've got three different ones, and all of them are, are fun games, um, but hopefully this is a good enough tutorial if you need to use it to learn how to play. Hopefully that's enough to learn how, um, or if you need it to review to decide if you want to buy the game. Um, by the way, I recommend it yet again, um, but hopefully it's enough information to make that choice. Uh, that being said, we'll see you later.